Hello and welcome to today's lesson on uh, double angle formulae. What we're going to do today is actually use specifically the sum identities for sine, cosine, and tangent that we've uh, covered over the last several days and several lessons to actually create three new identities that are actually known as the double angle identities. Okay, now the first one we'll start out, out with is we're going to look at sort of an alternate way of expressing something like sine of 2x. Right. Now, if we want to actually, actually work in uh, a familiar or known identity, what we could picture this as is, in fact, well, sine of 2x would be the same as just saying, well, if I added the same angle twice, so x plus x, I would end up getting 2x. What we would be able to do now, though, is recognize, well, this is now just a sum for sine, and I know that the relationship for that is, well, sine of the first angle times cos of the second angle, which happens to be the exact same thing, and then plus cosine of the first angle times sine of the second angle. Right Now what I would want you to realize, there's no difference between whether I say cos of x sine of x or sine of x cos of x, so these are literally the same thing. And the reason I would want to be aware of that is I've actually got like terms now. So I've got two sine of x, cos of x's. So in fact, what I'd end up with is 2 times sine of x times cos of x. One thing I will point out right now, notice the angle here. So the angle x happens to be 1 half of the angle inside the bracket there. Now we're going to kind of reiterate that as we go, uh, but it is worth mentioning at this point. Similarly, we'll look at, well, what could we do if we had cosine of 2x? So using sort of a similar breakdown, I just did, well, for sine I added x and x, so I can do the exact same thing here. So cos of 2x is literally the same as cos of x plus x. Now I can use the sum identity for cosine, so I would have cos of x, so the cos of the first angle, times cos of the second angle. But again, because they're the exact same angle, the expression looks the same. I'm going to have to do subtraction here since this is the sum identity. And now it's sine of the first angle times, again, sine of the second angle since the angles match. What we're going to now have is, well, this is actually equivalent to cos squared x minus sine squared x, right? Now that may look almost familiar to you because it's very similar to the Pythagorean identity, but it definitely is not. Okay, there's a big difference between whether that's a subtraction sign versus an addition sign. So there's, I don't want you to confuse uh, this as being another variation of Pythagorean identity. It's actually not. Now, one interesting thing about cosine of 2x, so the double angle identity for cosine, there's actually several variations as far as how, as far as how we could actually express this. Okay, now this is sort of the most direct um, variation that we've got kind of in front of us right now, but in fact, there are two other forms of this identity. Now, as it turns out, I, I'd sort of mentioned the fact that I, we wouldn't want you to, con I don't want you to confuse what you see cos squared x minus sine squared x with the Pythagorean identity. However, we can actually come up with a, an altered version of this relationship using the Pythagorean identity. So as it turns out, so right now we have... So given what we already have, so we already have sort of established above cos of x, cos of 2x is cos squared x minus sine squared x. 
Well, one thing we could do here, for instance, is picture, well, I know from Pythagorean identity that there's something equivalent to that. Okay, in fact, that would be the same as 1 minus sine squared x. So what we're able to do here is picture, well, this is like 1 minus sine squared x minus another sine squared x. So another variation of the double angle identity for cosine of, of 2x, as it turns out, is 1 minus 2 sine squared x. Okay. Or, there's another variation we could create. So again, if I sort of start with what we had a moment ago, so cos squared x minus sine squared x. That's, I guess, sort of like the base identity we can work from. Now, the fact that I see sine squared here, we've seen in the past, well, that's just if I rearrange Pythagorean identity, 1 minus cos squared x. So I could actually have instead cos squared x minus, and I'm going to put in place, I'm going to put in place of sine squared x, I'm going to have 1 minus cos squared x. Now what I'm able to do with that is, as it turns out, say cos squared x minus 1 plus cos squared x once I drop the brackets. So we end up getting an, another variation. So this is sort of the third variation of the double angle identity for cosine, and it's 2 cos squared x minus 1. Right? So there's a total of three expressions. So here's 1, here's 2, and of course the one we sort of started with, 3. All of those are equivalent to cos of 2x. Okay? And any one of those could be used as a valid substitution. And then lastly, if we want to look at tangent of 2x, like we've done the previous two cases with sine and cosine, I could picture this as tangent of x plus x. And we now know uh, from yet last day what the sum identity for tangent is. So this would be tangent of the first angle plus, since this is the sum, tangent of the second angle. Again, they're the same angle they match though. And then on the bottom I've got 1 minus tangent of the first angle times tangent of the second. Those expressions will match. Now on the top I've got like terms, so this would simplify to 2 times tangent x over 1 minus, and if I multiply tangent x by itself, I get tangent x squared. So to sort of summarize what we've now determined, we've got three new sort of sets of identities to work from. Uh, the one thing I pointed out, and this is actually true in all cases, so to refer back to the the sine of 2x example. You'll notice on the other side, when we've actually employed the, uh, the identity, uh, the angles that are part of sort of the right side of each expression are always half of what the angle in the original expression was. Okay, so if you look at what's highlighted in blue, so those angles are half of this angle, as it says. And that would apply in, in the cosine double angle relationships as well as the tangent. Um, double angle relationship as well. Okay, So we now have, as if you kind of add up the number of relationships we've added now, we've got uh, more or less five new relationships. Now keep in mind three of them come from the cos of 2x uh, identity, but those are all sort of new relationships we will be able to use going forward. So example one will just be more or less working with those uh, new identities that we have. Uh, what it wants us to do here is look at the expression that's given to us. It's it more or less going to be in what I would consider to be, say, expanded form. What we want to try and do is, is there a simplified version um, of, of the expression that's still equivalent to what's there? So what we would do, we look at this first one. The one thing I would point out, notice it's a product of sine and cosine of a matching angle. And the other thing that sort of gives away here uh, the, the fact that there's a coefficient 2 at the beginning. So that all kind of points to the idea that this should relate to a, the double angle identity for sine. 
Now, what I could do here, so what I would do here is I would sort of say, okay, this is going to be, uh, again, the double angle identity for sine. So what I would picture is I would say, okay, well, sine of two times whatever the angle uh, that I see present uh, with the expression that's here. So the angle is 3x. So as far as an equivalent simplified expression for what we had to begin with, it's actually equivalent to sine of, as it turns out, 6x. Okay, so they're equivalent. Now I have the expression in terms of just sine, so I would say it's, it's definitely more simplified than one that involves both a sine and a cosine. Now with part B, similar idea. So here we're looking at the fact that I have a cosine squared uh, expression minus the sine squared expression. And again, the fact that the angles match here is very important. So the fact that there's a 4y and a matching 4y here. So what you would need to sort of recognize here is that follows the basic pattern of uh, one of the double angle relationships for cosine. So kind of like what we just did, I would picture, okay, well, this should have to do with cosine, and it should be double whatever the angle that is present in the two expressions is, which is 4y. So equivalently, we would have cosine of, as it turns out, 8y is, is equal to the expression we were given here. Moving down. Now the next one, now this happens to involve uh, a sine squared relationship, but the fact that there's a 1 minus 2 times that sine squared relationship, what you'd need to do here is think, So you'd want to think the double angle identity specifically for cosine here. So what I would do is, again, like we've been doing, it should relate to cosine. And the angle that it should relate to is two times what I see as the angle present, angle present in the expression that's there. So as it turns out, this should be equal to cosine of 16w. Okay, and one more of this type. So for the last one here, if I look there, I see, you know, characteristically, two times tangent of some angle, and then in the bottom, one minus tangent squared of that same angle. This should have you thinking, well, this looks like the double angle relationship for tangent. It's just a matter of, well, what would the angle need to be? So what I'd recommend you do is say, well, the angle will have to be two times whatever the angle present in the actual expression that I'm looking at now is, which is one half times b. Now, if I picture two times a half b, that would be like 2b over 2, which would just simply end up being tangent of 1b or tangent of b. So we've been able to take a, a series of more complex looking expressions, recognize that they relate to one of the double angle identities, and then come up with just a single relationship to represent the overall expression. Okay, example two. Now this type of question we have done um, multiple times the last several lessons. So it's the same idea. The one thing we'll kind of need to establish with this one that's maybe a little bit different is the idea that it only involves one angle, whereas a lot of our other examples have had, uh, say, more than one angle. All right. Now, what I would do with this question, based on what it's asking, so we're told that for this angle, the unknown angle A, we know the sine ratio for that angle is 40 over 41. We also happen to know, if I look at what it's telling me right here, we know where angle A is. Now, between pi over 2 and pi, that would be represented, that would, that would represent the second quadrant specifically. All right, so we're going to need to keep that in mind um, when we do some of our calculations to sort of set this question up. The next thing I would have you thinking in terms of is, well, it wants us to figure out the value of sine of 2a, cos of 2a, and tangent of 2a. So we need to sort of recognize, well, what information is required to do that? Well, we now know that sine of 2 times an angle should be 2 times sine of half of the angle, so sine of a and cos of a. 
Now as far as looking at what's there, we already know sine of A, so there's no work we would need to do there. However, cosine of A we're not sure of, so we're going to need to figure that out. Um, now with the next part, part B, keep in mind there are actually three relationships for that one that we could kind of reference. Now we have a choice of cos of cos squared a minus sine squared a. We could use um, 2 cos squared a minus 1 or ideally and what would save us the uh, the least like lead to the least amount of work here would actually be to use the relationship that only involves sine of a since I actually already know what that is. So probably the easiest way to answer part b is to just think well 1 minus 2 times sine squared a that way I don't actually have to. I could actually answer that question right now without doing any additional work. Okay, so I'm going to highlight this. This is the easiest approach. Okay, there's nothing wrong with sort of analyzing the situation like we've done here and say let's pick the simplest way to get to the result that we're looking for. Right? And then for part C, tangent of 2a, well that should be 2 times tangent a over 1 minus tangent squared of a. So clearly we don't know what tangent of a is yet. So really all we really need to find to be able to answer all parts of this question we need to figure out what cos of a is and we need to figure out what tangent of a is. Now both of those things require the same information so we're going to be able to find both of them simultaneously. Right. Now to start this we'll say okay if we actually look at the fact that we know sine of a, sine of a is supposed to be 40 over 41. Now what that relationship tells us, keep in mind, that would tell us y, because that's supposed to be y over r, so it tells me y is 41, tells me y is 40, and it tells me that r is 41. The one thing I do not know, and this is why I don't know what cosine of a or, or tangent of a is, I don't know what x is. So as far as figuring out x, we can just use Pythagorean theorem. So we would have x squared plus, in this case, 40 squared. That will need to be 41 squared. Now, to isolate for x, we're going to first have to solve for x squared. So x squared is going to be my 41 squared, which ends up being 1,681. And I have to take away from that 40 squared, which is actually 1,600. So the difference between those two values is just 81. And then what I have to realize now, technically there are two solutions here. If, if x squared is equal to 81, x could be 9 or negative 9. But what I need to realize is it told me in the question that the angle was in... What I would need to realize here is based on what quadrant the angle is in, it's supposed to be in the second quadrant. If I picture the coordinates of any point in the second quadrant, I know for sure the x coordinate is negative. So we would have to establish here, okay, my x value, my x value in this case has to be negative 9. Okay. So the reason being is since angle A is in the second quadrant. If it had been in the if it had been in the first quadrant, different story, but we know it's in the second, so x is negative 9. <clears throat> what I would now know, so I'd be able to say, therefore, we were missing cosine of angle A, so cosine of angle A is going to have to be my x, which is negative 9, over my r, which is 41, and tangent of A is supposed to be the ratio of y over x, so I already knew y was 40, and my x is now negative 9. Okay, with this information now established, what we can do is start to answer parts A, B, and C. So for part A, it wanted to know what sine of 2a was equal to. So keep in mind that was supposed to be 2 times whatever sine of a was. Now we were told sine of a from the get-go. It was 40 
over 41, and I've now just established what cosine of A is, so it's supposed to be negative 9 over 41. So if I actually multiply those two expressions together, I'm going to end up with, so keep in mind this is like 2 over 1, so if I multiply the top together, I'm going to end up getting negative 720, and in the denominator I have to do 41 squared, which we've seen before, that's just 1,681. Now if there happen to be any common factors there that we could reduce that, we would, unfortunately, uh, they don't share any common factors other than one, so we're just going to leave it at that. Right, for part B, now again, keep in mind there would have been more than one way to arrive at the answer here, but we wanted to pick sort of the one that was easiest to do, so I suggested using the identity that actually used the given information, so 1 minus 2 times uh, sine of A all squared. Now we know sine of A is again 40 over 41, so I'm just going to picture 40 over 41 all squared, and then I'm going to try and simplify that. So I've got 1 minus 2 times, so this ends up being 1600 over 1000 681. Now, just looking ahead, I'm going to need a common denominator here, so that's going to be 1681. So I'm going to change or convert 1 to 1681 over itself, and now I'm going to have to subtract. Now, 2 times 1600 over 1681, I'm going to multiply the numerator, so that's 3200 over 1681. And then the difference here, as it turns out, when I subtract those two expressions, which is going to be what this expression ends up simplifying to. So what this ends up simplifying to, when I do 1681 minus 3200, what I'm left with is negative 1519 over 1681. Okay, so that is now what cosine of 2a is equal to. So if so far we've answered part a and part b. All that's left to do is answer now part c, and we finish the question. So for part c, keep in mind that was supposed to be tangent of 2a. Now we'd established from the identity for the double angle relationship for tangent, so that should be 2 times whatever the value of the tangent ratio for a is, which we figured out was supposed to be 40 over negative 9. So 40 over negative 9. Okay, and then in our denominator we're supposed to have 1 minus uh, tangent uh, of a squared, so that's just going to be 40 over negative 9 all squared. Now what I'm going to end up with in this particular case is a fraction over a fraction, so we'll sort of simplify as much as possible here what we have. So if I look at the top, again picture this as 2 over 1, so really the numerator of this uh, rational expression is going to be 80 over negative 9 but I'm now dividing that by picture 1 minus, and if I square 40 over negative 9, well, I would square the top and I'd square the bottom. So I'm going to have 1,600 over 81. Now, that expression would be positive, but I'm still subtracting it. So uh, I will have subtraction still happening in the denominator. So now I, what I would do is say, okay, well, 80 over negative 9. I need a common denominator to work with here, so if I go 81 over itself minus 1600 over 81, I can simplify the denominator. So what we would now have is 80 over negative 9, and then over top of, if I do the difference there, uh, 81 minus 1600, that's negative 1000. 519 over 81. What I want you to now realize is we've got basically two fractions that we are dividing. Okay, so keep in mind this is just division separating the numerator from the denominator. So what I can do when I'm dividing fractions, I just have to remember that I can invert and multiply. So to simplify this, 
we're going to have 80 over negative 9. I could multiply that by the reciprocal of the denominator, which is 81 over Anyone over negative 1,519. Now, a couple things I could do. The fact that I'm multiplying a negative times a negative, I know the result here will be positive. I also know that 9 divided by itself is 1, and 9 goes into 81 9 times. Okay, I wouldn't be able to cross-reduce the 80 and the 1,519 because they don't have any common factors. So in the end, this ends up being equal to, so if I do 80 times 9, that's 720. And in the denominator, 1 times, or negative 1, I should say, times negative 1,519 is just 1,519. So keep in mind this was tangent of 2a. So we've now calculated all three of the relationships that it had asked for. We would now be done. Okay, example 3, and this is the last example. We're going to do just a quick uh, identity proof because the first two examples involved either equivalent expressions or actually working out uh, a value for some expression. So here, uh, we haven't done a proof today. This is sort of the first and last, as it turns out, proof. Okay, so anytime we're asked to prove an identity, first thing you should do, separate it into its left and its right side. So on the left side, I've got sine of 2x over 1 minus cos of 2x, and then on my right side, I've got cotangent x. Now, as far as, you know, which side should we start with, what, what might we want to do, uh, the, I would definitely say the left side's probably got more work that needs to be done on it. However, because the left side is in terms of sine and cosine, the right side is not. What I would probably do to start with is just represent the right side in terms of sine and cosine. So I would know cotangent is cos of x over sine of x. There's not much else I'd be able to do with the right side. So now the goal will be, okay, let's make the left side look like cos of x over sine of x. So focusing on the left side, what I would see is, okay, sine of 2x, well, that would allow me to use the double angle identity for sine. So I can replace that top expression with 2 times sine of x times cos of x. And then I do have several choices as far as what uh, I would want to maybe put in place of the cos of 2x in the denominator. The one thing I would sort of maybe suggest to you is notice on the right side, specifically here, what's in the denominator. It's in terms of sine of x. So if I have the choice, chances are what I'm going to replace the cos of 2x with here should probably be a relationship involving sine of x and preferably only sine of x because um, there's not supposed to be anything but a sine of x left over at the end. So what we're going to do, we're going to go 1 minus, and let's think, okay, well, which identity or which relationship for cos of 2x involves just sine? Well, we saw that it was equivalent to 1 minus 2 sine squared x, right? So we'll see, using that substitution, if it gets us where we want to go, right? So at the top, at this point, not going to change anything. It's still 2 sine of x cos of x. But in the denominator, notice when I drop the brackets, I'm going to have to subtract the 1, but add the 2 sine squared x. Right? What I'm able to do now is say, well, in the denominator, I can simplify that. 1 minus 1 is 0. So I, in the end, what I end up being left with is, well, the left side is now 2 sine of x cos of x, all over top of just 2 sine squared x. Now, as far as, is there anything common to the, the numerator and the denominator? Well, the 2s are common, so I would be able to divide those out. And I would also sort of realize, well, I've got a sine of x in the numerator and sine squared x, which is actually the equivalent of sine of x times itself. So, in fact, I could also divide out a sine of x from the top and bottom, keeping in mind though I would still have an extra factor of sine of x left in the denominator. So notice what I have left over. I have just my factor of cos of x 
on the top and my one factor of sine of x on the bottom. If I compare the left and the right side at this point, they are identical. So I'd be able to say the left side equals the right side and ending as always with QED. So the identity had been proven. We are finished. All right. if you have any questions about any of the examples uh, from today, just make sure you ask in class and uh, have a good evening. Talk to you later.